Good evening, uh, Marshall and Rebecca. Yeah, just make sure you're still with me. Oh, I'm still your wife. You're still my Good, we're still together. Uh, <laughs> 20, Almost four. 24 years this November uh, in about... Um, um, in about a month, a month from now, right? It's what is today, October the 17th, I don't know it is. Anyway, so uh, hey, we're excited to be with you guys again. Uh, we love doing these videos. This has been on my heart for the last uh, week, and so I've been putting off, putting off, praying about it, just reading the God's Word some more and more. And I just want to share with you guys what God has put on our hearts and what God's been showing us. Today is going to be an awesome video, and I want to encourage you guys, listen to this video, hear what, uh, hear what, what we have learned, and I want to encourage you, you to learn as well. We're not perfect, not perfect at all. We're not, we're not perfect family. Uh, we might argue at times. Uh, my wife and I might argue at times. My kids might not like us all the time. We're, we don't do perfect things. That's not the point. But the point is, is God uses imperfect people. And that's the point I want to get across to you tonight, to trust in God, follow God, serve God, seek God, and watch God use you because he loves, he loves to move in your life. He loves people. He's looking for people that are truly hungry for him. So be hungry for God, come after God, see God, and uh, and you will see God move in your life. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to dig, dig into the, the Word, and I'm going to show you some really cool things. You have something to say? I do. Oh, um, interrupt me. That's fine. Go ahead. I'm used to it many years later. <laughs> anyway, but our first assignment is our kids, and we were yeah. blessed with many of them. And so... What? Uh, not all of them? No. <laughs> Some we're not blessed with. No, no. We were blessed with many children. Oh, gotcha. Um, Some we're not happy with. No, just kidding. That is not what I meant. <laughs> Thank you. Now I have to fix that one. Yeah, no, keep um, going, keep going. No, but that we would um, show them as parents what it is to pray and what it is to worship and what it is to seek God on things. That's that's our first right. job before right. anything else. We've gotten a whole lot better at uh, teaching our children how to follow God as we've gotten better at it. And so we've gotten a whole lot better over the years. You know, I wrote a book, I think I talked about this last year, my first book was really awesome, you should go get it. Wow. Uh, that's wrapping paper. But it's kind of funny how we've learned, gotten better, gotten smarter, and just learned about God. And so I want to encourage you, no matter where you're at, keep going. Keep going forward, keep learning, keep trusting, keep trying, and don't worry about it. Don't worry about where you're at. Don't worry about you're not perfect yet, and just keep going. That's my message more than anything is all of us can get there. And that's the message of our ministry, Way Missions. We want to show people how to walk in the way. And that's what we're going to do when we get to Costa Rica. We're going to show people how to walk like we're walking. We're going to show people how to see what we have seen. We have seen cancer healed. We've seen broken arms healed. We have seen um, migraine headaches healed. We have seen heart issues healed. We've seen stomach issues healed. We've seen people restored with their families. We have seen so much. I mean... We've had dreams and visions from God that come to pass, and so there's so much we've seen, and we want to show people to see it, and this, this the cool thing is we're not perfect. That's the, that's the best thing to me. Well, a lot of people think it's supposed to be instant. That's part of it, too. We'll get there in a minute. But uh, I'm going to go back to perfect thing, is uh, they think that we're perfect, and you just see right now, she said something that, that I want to go a different direction, and that God won't use us now because we disagree on something. But you, I have learned so much over the things. She's gotten so much better. But uh, anyway, so I want to encourage you, listen, listen, listen. It's not about being perfect. It's about loving God, seeking God, and letting God talk to you and flow through your life. Because he loves you, he wants you to know him, and he wants to flow through your life. So you got to trust him. That's the biggest thing is trusting him, growing in that, learning that. And you just get better. You just learn. And so that's the biggest lesson is learn how to listen to his voice and it only comes from reading his word. You got to read his word more and more and more. You got to read it more and more and more. And and that's what I learned from a couple of different people. A lot of famous people have said that. And even today, I heard another famous man of God that's really cool. Um, the uh, I don't remember the name of the, the church he was at. My phone's inside. But he was out in California preaching. He's part of a church out there. And him and David Hogan are two of my favorite. I just met this guy. I didn't meet him, but I just heard his heard his part of his sermon. I heard half it today. And he's one of my favorites right now. But him and David Hogan, two of my favorites right now, just from what they've seen and how much they fast, how many see God. And just because that's, you know, you go through seeing the people that you love. But uh, part of my, our foundation is Norma Hayes, Kenneth Holman, Kenneth Hagen, uh, Jerry Sabell, and, uh, and Michael Yeager. Those, those are Andrew Womack. Those guys, those guys have seen what we have not seen, a part of it. And we're seeing more and more of it as we listen to the men of God that have been here done here before us. You can listen to them. And my message tonight, what God gave me a week ago, this is so cool because I'm going to share with you something God gave me a week ago, 
that I heard Ken Copeland say last night that Ken Hagen said when he was sick. And I'm like, dude, that, that matches up with what God showed me. And that, that how it encourages you. And so I want to encourage you, read the word, go by the, go by the word of God, not by what you think, or not by what you hear, or not what somebody else says. Go by the word of God says. And that's where people make mistakes. They go by what? Go ahead. Well, if it disagrees with the word, then right. it, it's irrelevant. It's just somebody's opinion. And right. we don't need that. We need the word. And we all do that. Right. We all do that. We all have an opinion, and then we go, oh, wait a minute, what does God's Word say? Well, and, I've never seen somebody heal the cancer, or I've never seen somebody um, get a house debt-free. I've right. never seen somebody been given a car. Well, you're missing out. Read the Word. Follow and, the Word. And put it in your heart. Right. And all the other doubt will go away. And that's where we're going tonight, is talking about that. And we're talking about Mark 4. And how the sower sows the word, and Jesus said all parables are wrapped on Mark 4. If you don't understand Mark 4, you don't understand how God's word works. And so it's all in Mark 4, and uh, Mark 4, I think it's 1 through uh, 25 or so. But I want to encourage you, go back and read that again. Go back and read it, read it, read it, read it, meditate on it, think about it. But uh, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about that. So jump over to Romans 1 in a minute here. But Mark 4, uh, we're talking about the sower sows the word. <laughs> Excuse me. And Mark 4, we'll read there just about um, the four different groups of people again. Don't you understand your parable? This is Mark 4, 13. And again, this is the Tree of Life version. My wife has the NEB version, Modern English version. But then how we understand all the parables. How you understand all the parables, you understand this parable. Everything's wrapped around this parable. The sower, this verse 14, the sower sows the word. These are the ones beside the road where the word is sown. Whenever they hear, Satan comes quickly and takes away the word that was sown in them, that has been sown in them. So in other words, we're just repeat a little bit, the word's been sown in them. The word was sown inside of somebody, and the devil took it away. If you didn't listen to last week's video, and you go listen to it, because I talk about that, I'm not going to repeat it right now, but I talked about what, how God showed that to me. And number two, these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, immediately they receive it with joy. And then they have no root in themselves, but last only a short while. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, immediately they fall away. Number three, those are the ones among the thorns. They have heard the word. But the worries of the world, the seduction of wealth, and desire for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And tonight we're talking a little bit of that about choking the word. And what had, and imagine that when you're choking a word, what is that? What, what do you think of when you see choking the word, choking a choking a, a rose bush out? How how would you imagine? What would you see that in? What would you see a choking? A, what would you say when when I say when I say something choking something out? What is that? What do you visualize um, when you hear that? Well, I would think that. Um, it's and not just that so you know, we don't plan these. I don't like planning anything. I just like going with what the Holy Spirit says. So if some of us, I throw it at you, uh, I, I don't know. Except we've been <laughs> studying all week. So. Right, correct, correct, correct. Um, but I would think that it would not give oxygen. Like right. It would not give, you wouldn't be able to receive anything for growth. Oh, that's good. Anything else with that? That's really good. No? Nope. Nope, it's okay. really good. That's good. <laughs> not getting oxygen. <laughs> everything grows because of water, oxygen, and everything else. It has to grow. And choking, not getting oxygen, it cuts it out, becomes unfruitful. And we're going to talk about that one tonight. But the fourth one, those are the ones sown in the good soil. They hear the word, accept it, and produce fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. Even those that get the, that get the full harvest, even those only see 30, 60, and 100 fold. And I want to be a 100 fold person. And so or I'm going to turn over to Romans 1. We're going to dig in Romans 1 talking about this, um, about being unfruitful and about choking the word. And it says this, and I'm going to go off on a tangent here. Because this is what I heard, Ken, this is what God told me last week. And then I heard a message yesterday from uh, Fargo's uh, North Dakota. Is it North Dakota, South Dakota? Fargo? It's up north somewhere. But anyway, and then North, north Dakota, the 2022 Believers uh, Convention up there in Fargo, he's preaching. I watched it last night. And this is cool because this matches what God showed me. And so again, that just kind of confirms in my heart what God's taking me. But I'm going to read this with me in uh, Romans 1. Uh, we're starting verse 16 and go through uh, 17. It says this. You want to read it in the MEV? Sure. It's the MEV? Okay. 16 and 17? Yeah. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For it is 
For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And I start reading this that day, and you can see on my notes right there, I don't know if you can see very clearly, but I have some notes in there, but it says the righteousness in the, in the Tree of Life version, it says in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from trust to trust or faith to faith, depends on what version you read. But I start looking it up, because I've been learning a lot from the Bible Hub, and I want to encourage you, if you don't have the Bible Hub app, you should get the Bible Hub app, there's an app on your phone, app on the internet, and you can use it. And if you need help with it, text me, call me, or find someone, some find some young person around um, they can help you with it. <laughs> That's under 30. That's under 30. <laughs> Who said the other day? Someone said it at Jerry Seville. Somebody said, if you're on 30, uh, Drew, Eric's son. If you're under 30, call somebody. Anyway, so thanks, Drew, for us old people. But anyway, <laughs> and so I encourage you, go go listen to it. Go, go, go get a Bible Hub app. Find out how to use it. Because trust to trust, and I am not an English major. If you listen to me long enough, you'll realize that. Nancy Kugler, a friend of ours from, oh, from yeah. Colorado, up here in Colorado right now, which I'm stoned him. I'm sure she used to laugh at some of my sermons when well, I was she there. Did. She lived three and a half years. What is he saying? I've made up words all the time. And so anyway, so when I when when I study this and I get an English version, I'm like, oh look, I learned something. And I still don't know what this means necessarily, but I want to encourage you, uh, go read the Bible yourself, go find out what it means yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Go get the Bible Hub app, go read it, see what it says. Go get some Greek theologian to help you out. I got some good friends I can hook you up with. But uh, the Greek here and the, the trust to trust faith to faith. That word faith there in the first one, when it says the first trust there, when it says to trust, that first word is a genitive case. Don't ask what that means. But what it means is to be owned by. Take a moment let that sink in. It means owned by. And I'm going to tell you some testimonies real quick like here about this, how it works. And the second trust there means accusative. It means the receiver of an action. So the first word trust, when it's written in Greek, because they don't, we say faith to faith and understand it. But if you understand Greek, that first word there is written in the genitive case, which means owned by. The second word that trust or faith is accusative, that it receives the action of. So when you own faith, you receive the action of faith. That goes along with Mark 11, 23 and 24. Let's turn over there real quick, like, I'm going to read that to you. But this goes right along with Mark 11, 23 and 24, and it says this. This is, when, this is when Jesus cursed the fig tree. And they said, Rabbi, look, in verse 21, the fig tree curse has shriveled up. It happened, I think in Luke it happens that day, and Mark happens the next day. It depends on which one, which one you're reading. But it doesn't matter how it happened. Have you ever, have you ever seen a tree shrivel up in one day where they happen right then or a day later? It doesn't matter. For a tree to shrivel up and be dead, and it says there, it says there um, I think the Luke one says shrivel up from the ground up. Like it didn't just shrivel up, but it, just, it was gone. So it's kind of cool. So Yeshua answered, and this is cool. Jesus didn't, this again, tree of life version. Jesus wasn't even excited about it. He's just like, oh, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it wasn't even like, yeah, wasn't that cool, guys? I mean, he was just like, guys, this is cool. It just, so Jesus probably talked a lot like Andrew Womack. If you've never heard Andrew Womack talk, he's not very exciting. Uh, but anyway, it's okay. But he's very exciting he's, at the same time. It's just, oh, it's an awesome word. He's but He's not a marshal. No, he's not me. But when he preaches, he's like, I'm so excited right now. And you're like, what? And it's okay. So anyway, so Jesus might have missed, I think, Jesus, Jesus cried. Jesus had more emotion than your Womack, I think. Anyway, it's okay. But anyway, but Jesus said this. He goes, have faith in God. Amen. I tell you, if someone says this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt as in his heart, but trust that what he says is happening, so it should be for him. For this reason I say to you, when whatever you pray and ask, believe you have received it, and it will be yours. That whole that goes right along with 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 faith Romans faith. one, faith of faith, the genitive case. You have to own it, and then you receive it. We we I asked my kids the other day, and we know this answer. How many times we pray for finances, for physical, emotional, all the list of things, and we don't see it. It's like, wait a minute, we know what the Word of God says, we believe the Word of God, you turn around and then you do see it. The other day, we've seen this many times in our lives, and God's been teaching about this, you have to own it before you see it. And that's what faith to faith is, we learn it from faith to faith, we grow in faith to faith. It's not just getting, learning more of the Word of God, you have to learn one aspect of the Word of God, you have to own that aspect, and then you receive it. We know about healing. My family, Jesse, we weren't there for that, that's the cool, it's not always about us seeing it, Jesse saw this at, at, um, at youth group years ago. When she was 12 years old, she broke her arm 
at youth group. It was black and blue. And they're supposed to film at 8.30. And at 9.30, they still went home. And a youth pastor, Steve, what was Steve's last name? Van 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 Kai Alpha. Kai Alpha there at Virginia, Virginia Tech. Tech. I'll get all right. Anyway, he's awesome. He needs me. He, I do need you. And uh, so Steve and uh, Martin are, are associate pastors then, and all are, and, and Carson and Jesse. and Jesse, and Kaylee was there. Uh, Karina was there? No, I think she was not. And they all, oh, she might have been. They all got around and prayed for her for like an hour. They prayed for an hour, and Jesse told me this just the other day. Jesse said this. She goes, Dad, I didn't want to get healed at first because I wanted to cast. I thought it would be cool to cast. And finally, about 45 minutes, I said, fine. To herself, she said this, fine, I'll get healed. And she got healed like that. And so it's kind of funny. So I love my God, Jesse. Anyway, but uh, it's funny. But we saw this recently. Um, we saw this in ourselves uh, recently with that, with believing and receiving it. Rebecca's chest been hurting her up in her chest for some reason for a couple weeks, for a couple months. Sorry, a couple months. And we prayed for it. I lay me on chest. Oh, Jesus, heal my wife. And you know, nothing happens. And the other night, we're laying in bed, and she goes, my chest would hurt me. And finally, I had enough. And finally, I said, said, Father, your word says this. And I don't remember what verse I used. I used a verse from the Bible. Devil, get your hands off her. And I prayed with seriousness. I didn't scream. I didn't shout. That's not the point. It's not screaming. It's not shouting. It's not your emotions involved. It's knowing it. It's not emotional. It's not screaming and shouting. It's knowing it. And so, but I knew the word of God. And I had enough. And I said, in Jesus' name, be healed. And she was healed. And the difference there of why she got healed that night versus the two months is just clicking over to knowing it. You have to own it to see it. And Kev Hagen said that he was sick for 17 months, laying in his bed, paralyzed from the waist down. Right. And he, he was a good Baptist boy and he, he was baptized in the, in, the, in the Baptist church. He knew the Baptists were awesome. He knew the word of God. Their but he foundation started, he's, he's, is great. Foundation's awesome. He started reading the word and he goes, wait a minute. God's word said I'm healed. And one night he goes, wait a minute. God's word said I'm healed. And all of a sudden he pulled himself up and his feet were like, like logs uh, in the, is what Ken, Hagen, Ken Copeland said the night. And I heard the story from Ken, Cop from Ken Hagen 100 years ago when, he, when I was 12 years old. But anyway, but um, anyway, just, it just went from, from, cause knowing it's not the issue. Right. You just can't know it cause we know it. It has to go from knowing it to believing, that's what he said, but it's faith. It, there's something different there. Faith, I put in my book I wrote, you gotta get it, about everyone getting healed. It's not an issue of knowing it, it's an issue of, of acting it out, believing it. There's a difference it's there. Both. It's both, it, it goes together, but you've gotta step over into actually, and that only comes from meditating on his word. If you don't meditate on his word, it, it doesn't grow when you, that's why you keep reading it, you keep reading, keep meditating, thinking about things, thinking about Michael Yeager is, is my most favorite teacher about meditating, because he does so well about, he's got like, he's got like 100 and 200,000 200, books, I don't know books, he got a lot, I'm just kidding, almost, almost 200 books, something yeah. like that, but a lot about meditation, and again, we want to be like these men of God, and that's what I encourage you, do stuff like them. And so it depends how far you want to go. And every man of God, even the guy I told about, heard you about today, even he said this, that he started off, uh, when he got spirit filled, he spent, I want to say, six hours a day praying in tongues. And if you hear Dave Robinson, Dave Robinson spent hours of praying in tongues. David Jerry, Hogan praising David tongues. David Hogan praising tongues. Jerry Savelle, Jerry Savelle, one of our favorite preachers as well, he said this, that his first six months, he did nothing but spend time in the Word of God for eight hours a day. You have to invest the time, and that's sowing the word in your heart to come out of your heart. And it takes time. It's not something easy. It's not, it is easy. It's simple. It just takes time. That's what I mean. It's dumb. So if you don't get it right away, don't get frustrated with yourself. Well, you know, because um, a lot of churches today will say, oh, God's not expecting anything from you, or you don't have to spend tons of time in prayer. That 15 minutes in the morning is great. Do you know what, though? I just sat here and God showed me something. Yeah, that's great if you just want salvation and you don't want to grow up in it. It's great. Right. Because you've, you've given your heart to Jesus. You're trying to change your life. But we want to see the power of God. And you'll still get the blessing of God because yes. God loves you. He always loves you. He never hates you. He, never, he doesn't hate anybody until you absolutely disobey him. And that gets into King Saul or and other things. Or blasphemy. Yeah, that's right. other things. But. No, and so I don't mean that mean. Praise God you're saved. But I don't want to just sit there and fill a pew every week either. No. I want to go out doing the works of the ministry. I want to go out 
doing more than what Jesus did because that's what it says right. I can do. Right. I want to walk in power and authority as a Christian. And, um, and, and you have a spot to play. You have a place to play in this. I was reading about Gideon this week, how Gideon is awesome. And how there was a prophet, a preacher, that came along and said, okay, God's going to save you, but you haven't following me. And then the angel came to Gideon and said, Gideon, you're the man. And then Gideon, and there's a whole story about there, but Gideon got 10 servants to go help him tear the altars down. And then he, then he got 300 men to go help him fight the battle. And then he called other people to kill the kings and it goes on and on. And so you have a part to play, whatever that part is. And so don't be, again, don't be stressed. Or, yeah. or, or convicted or not convicted. Don't be condemned by the devil that you're not seeing all that God wants you to see. But keep digging in the word and Seek you him. will see it. Seek, Seek him, him and you will see it. His word does not change. And I told my kids the other day, I, and I write this about Fred Price. I love how Fred Price said stuff. He always turned around backwards. He was you, my granddad's favorite. Granddad's favorite. Mm -hmm. I love Mark 11. Which, Cadell? Uh -huh. Cadell's, Cadell was awesome. Um, Mark 11, uh, 23, 24. He turned around backwards. That's what, that's what Fred Price would do. He goes, for this reason I say to you, whatever you pray and ask, believe you received it, and it'll be yours. So, so Fred Price would say it this way. He goes, so, and I might have it a little wrong. You have to go find one of his sermons. But he would say it like this. So if the Bible says, believe you receive it, and it'll be yours, if you don't have it, then you didn't believe it. And so it's like, then that hits you squarely between the eyes and look, oh, wait a minute. That's not, that can't be accurate. That's not the word because I believe it. If you believe it, you will see it. And if you go, I had my kids read uh, about, we read the Bible all the time. Had my kids read 2 Kings 1 through 13, talking about Elijah. Oh, here's a little golden nugget for you. I put, I wrote, I'm going to go read this to you. This was not planned. That's why, that's why, that's why we do this just for the, just uh, following the Holy Spirit. But 2 Kings, in chapter 2, I believe it is, when, uh, when Elijah came along, and uh, yes, yeah, 2 Kings chapter 2, in verse, um, um, in verse 11, um, he says, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I will do for you before I'm taken from you. Elijah said, please let a double portion of your spirit come upon me. He replied, this Elijah replied to Elisha, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Listen to this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Sorry, this is cool. God just showed me something. It's cool. Listen to this. Oh my gosh, it's cool. Did that taste cool? Listen to this. This is really cool. I'm not kidding. God just showed me something. I love the Holy Spirit. Nevertheless, if you see when I'm taken from you, it will be so to you. But if not, it will not be so. So, Elijah asked from Elijah a double portion, right? Fast forward to John 14. John 14, 12 says, He that believes in me shall do the same works I did and greater works. Let me ask you a question. Did the disciples see Jesus go away? Uh-huh. Did Elijah see Elijah go away? Jesus said, do the same works and greater works. And the disciples saw Jesus go away. And Jesus prayed for all of us in John 17. He said, John 17, I pray not only for disciples, but for all of those that will believe me through their word, that will all be one. Well, if we are one with the disciples and they saw Jesus go up, by golly, we can see double. Did you get that? Amen. So this Amen. is cool, folks. Jesus promised it. We can see it. Amen. Keep reading the word. Keep growing from faith to faith. And like Romans said, read again here quick. You got it there already? No, you turned two. I did. Okay, Romans one. It says it's okay. Romans one. It says it again. Romans one. I'm not ashamed of the good news, for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who trusts, to the Jew first, and to also to the Greek. In in it in it the righteousness of God is revealed. From trust to trust, as written, the just shall live, or the righteousness, or the righteous, my ball, the righteous shall live by faith. We, it's okay. <laughs> we have to learn hey, to live by faith. And um, and we have seen that happen in our lives. Mm -hmm. We have seen time and time again. One of my favorite stories is when uh, when Case and we were, we're, in the, we're in the morning, we're praying in, in our bedroom together and worshiping God and praying. Mm -hmm. And we left the bedroom. And as we're coming out, Case and he two years old came walling and running around there. He came in there and he, he spun around and turned. And, and as he spun around and turned, he was walking out. He fell and hit his head on the door frame of the of the wall, of the of the door. 
That's what door frame is, the door. And when he fell and hit it, I immediately bent over and picked him up, put him on my shoulder, because he's about to scream his head off. Have you ever seen a two-year-old hit their head on something? They're not very happy about it. And so Rebecca was behind me. She could see his face. I couldn't see him. So what happened at that moment? It was daylight. Middle of the day. I remember, I remember the daylight. And he but, was like this, right? About she to scream his that. head off? Yeah, yeah it's good, good, good facial expression. Thanks. That's good. Um, and I laid my hand on his head immediately and commanded his body to be healed in Jesus' right. name. I said, pain, you get off this body. You are healed in Jesus' name. And he went from this to... I'm okay. I'm just hugging my dad. And then he got down and ran off. And yeah. it wasn't even a no mark, no Nothing. bruising, no didn't even didn't even phase him. And it to me that was cool because we just spent time with Father God. We were in his presence. And I didn't pray for him. My wife did, and instantly he was healed. And so it's just but and there was no there was no thought of hers of saying, Will this work? Will it not work? Should I pray? Right. Should I not pray? It was just this it came out of her. If you get the word, and what we did in the times of prayer is because she went in with the sickness, we spent time in worship, spent time praying in tongues, spent time in prayer, and then we would read scriptures for a good 20, 30, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour long, just reading healing scriptures because we wanted to see Rebecca get healed completely because I want my wife around for a long, long time. And so the issue there is the word of God was inside of us and it came out of her. And we've seen that many times. And it came out of me more than... Oh, is he okay? Oh, is there? Do Do you think there's gonna be we're gonna need stitches? None of that even crossed my mind. No. It was immediately I put my hand on his on right. his forehead and he was healed and I didn't even stress about it. But at other times that has come out of her. Oh yes. Or has come out of me, and so not always does faith come out of us. But we had just been filled up. But when you're and spending all the time, time in the Word of God, it'll just come out of you. So that's why you have to spend more time in the Word of God so it comes out of you. If, if, it, if the first response is not faith, that lets you know, wait a minute, I need more of God. If your first response is, oh my gosh, oh blank, crap, I can't say crap, oh whatever, something else comes out of you, but not, not, Jesus says you're healed, then you know, wait a minute, I need more of God. And so don't be condemned, don't feel guilty. Again, don't let the devil beat you up. Just go know that God loves you and he's wanting more out of you because he wants to flow out of your life. Because he, I told us last time as well, he wants you to impact not only your life, but he wants to impact people's lives around you. So the more that you spend time in the word of God, the more you do this, the whole world can get saved. And that's where we're coming down to it. We hear this more and more from a lot of people. We're getting to the point where it's not going to be famous ministers. It's going to be all of us together. All of us doing this. So wherever you live, across the world, across the country, across the, uh, wherever, the more you dig into God's word, all of a sudden he's using all of us. So it's not about one famous person. It's about all of us working together. And so whatever you do, when you just get after it, you just start meditating on the word of God more and more. And if you don't see it today, if you pray for something, you don't see it, don't, don't, don't ever doubt the word of God. Just, just, just digging more and say, nope, I'm going to dig in more. Okay, God, I don't see it today. I'm going to dig in more. Um, I have a pra practical um, answer that I think that, that some people might appreciate. We have a niece that worked a lot and um, also was trying to get in shape for something. And she would go to the gym and she'd be there for three hours and she would have her headphones on or earphones on um, the whole time she was there. But what was she listening to? She listened to the Word of God because her and her dad had a contest of how quickly they would read the Bible. Read the Bible. Right. Um, and so she was listening to the Word and she was listening to preaching podcasts and that's all she would do. And she did it for months. And right after that, God put her in position to be for a position at church yeah, that right. she wasn't even seeking necessarily. No. Um, and so um, she's doing that and she still has other hopes and dreams in her life right. but god blessed her with that and, and she's young yeah she's she's like 19 20 she's 20 yeah. 20 or about to be about 20, 21 somewhere right there and other people want a position but she got it and other people were a little upset with her and my, my people in the church i'm sure were like how'd you get that position when you're a 20 year old kid because she spent time in the word of god it's it's not about good looks Although we're a handsome couple, it's sorry. It's not about good looks. It's not about um, anything. It's about who God is, Amen. and He is a God of love, and He loves you. 
He cares about you. He wants to. He wants to. He wants to fill you up with His presence, with the joy, His peace, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, Kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. He wants to give it to you, and He wants to know you. He, and the go ahead. He wants to know you, and He wants you to know Him. Yep. And Those he, are two separate things, right yep. there. Oh, you, you said already, that last time. Mm -hmm, he already knows you because He made you, but that you would know Him and oh, truly good. know Him yeah. are two separate things, and yeah. you want He wants you to desire both. Right. And it, when you get both. When you understand how much he loves you and how much he wants to flow in your life and it change your life, you will be a different person. And everywhere you go, we see miracles. And we see that happen quite often. We go to dinner, we go somewhere, and all of a sudden God says, pray for this person, they get yeah. healed. We see it all the time. You can see it too. You dig into God's word. We're not special people. Like I said, I said, when I started this whole thing off tonight, we started, we're not perfect. Right. We might get in arguments. We might, our kids might argue with us. They might not agree with us on everything, but that's not the point. We love our kids dearly, and they love us, and they're all they're all being used by God. All of my kids are seeing God talk to them, use them, and none of us are perfect, none of us are special, but we love God, That's and right. we and we read His Word. And the more I'm not kidding, the more you dig into this, and the more you meditate on it, and don't ever say I've read it enough. We have a friend of ours said that he read it so much he read it enough. Don't ever say that. Read the Word of God. Read it over and over and over and meditate on Meditate on the same verse over and over again until it comes out of you. And you'll know when it comes out of you when a situation arises and it changes your life. And you don't get stressed. You don't get stressed. You don't get... Um, nope. You don't try to be in control. You don't um, try, to, try to blow it off and put up some wall to somebody to keep your space. You're just focusing on Jesus. Right. Not focusing on the things. Right. So, anyway... Love you guys. Let me pray for you guys, and um, and uh, we'll let you guys go. And have a great evening. If you need help, please call us. Please email us. Please write us, and we'll pray for you. If there's anything else we can do to help you with, let us know. So, Father, thank you for these awesome people listening to us today. Father, I ask you to bless them. Father, I ask you to flow in their lives. I ask you to touch every one of them and let them see you. Let them know you, Holy Spirit. Let them find you wherever they're at. Let them get a hold of the Word of God and read it and meditate on it and study it and grow from trust to trust, from faith to faith from the genitive case to the accusative case, from, from owning it to receiving it. Let every one of them see it, Father. Thank you for blessing them in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray that you would uh, also walk in his way. That's the biggest. Amen. Walk in his way.